friends, it's Serena and welcome back to the Falco family. I'm all like dressed up. I'm feeling some kind of way about it because I literally live in t-shirts and sweatpants all the time. But today, your friend put on a dress. We are the Falco family. Brian, Serena, Cameron, Kendall, and Savannah. We're a family of five driven by purpose and fueled by love. We decided to trade in the traditional school life for a life where every day is an adventure of faith and love. From a small photography business grew a love of memory keeping and filmmaking that turned into a full blown dream of becoming a family of filmmakers exploring the truth about education. So we're learning to document our adventures in homeschool business and life and tell stories of how we live and what we learn. So today's video is sponsored by our patron friends club. Thank you friends for all that you have been in our lives that make it possible for me to show up here. Today's video, I'm going to talk to you about our writing goal. We spent many years working on our reading goals, increasing our reading time as a family, and really just developing that muscle of learning to read more together and we have been very successful as that I'm very happy with the way that has panned out we read quite a bit fiction nonfiction all of those things and now we are moving on to our next phase which is writing so today I'm going to show you a few of the resources that I've gathered together and how I kind of work through it in my mind I know the goal that I have in my heart and now trying to get that out and um, share that with my family and get them to see the vision and the goal too is kind of what I move on to next I almost always start to carve out spaces in our homes, in our lives, um, that makes room for accomplishing these goals. So I'm always looking for things to make it fun and exciting and different. To read more as a family, I created little spaces around our home, little book nooks and places where books can live. And now moving into writing, I wanna do the same thing. So I want to have little spots around the house that are more conducive to them just getting cozy in a corner with a pencil or a typewriter whatever tools we use to write more and make it fun and exciting the goal is not um to point out any specific resource that i feel like you need to go and buy it's almost always something around the house that you can add to the mix to make it more exciting so first let's talk about journals journals have always been a big deal for us, blank pages can be a little bit intimidating. However, I love to see it. So we have always had a journal that I include in our homeschool life and the goal for journals is nothing specific other than just to open the page and write. Journals have always been a part of our homeschool lives and I love them. A lot of days get missed, but that's okay. The goal is to have something that you can open up and write out your thoughts and feelings. I feel like journaling is super important. One of those things that has no clear direction or end result in mind other than just having words or pictures or whatever on the pages. In addition to blank page journals, having a journal prompt book is always a good idea. I mean, they really just help you keep memories and there's so many fun ones that you could grab these days, but these are the ones that I had on hand. So I'll start with these. And this is another thing I really try to do um, when it is a goal that I have set and I wanna go and get something new and exciting. I try my best to resist that urge to get something new and to look at what I already have. So while there are plenty of journals and things out there, nine times out of ten you already have something that you can start with to get you going and then of course you can add to it and get new things as you move forward along the way for me writing and conversation go hand in hand i talk a little bit about this in a video on our channel about how we approach language arts pointing those subjects back to where purpose began and for us language arts has everything to do with communication. When Father's Day came around, I thought it would be super fun uh, to find a few books that each of the kids could have and it would help them to move along in this special time with their dad and spend time talking to him and writing things down. The first one I have is My Dad in His Own Words. This journal is more so about assigning it to him and it has things like free time, your favorite childhood books, 
your favorite childhood TV shows. So um, we haven't gotten started with these. And this is what I'm saying. Sometimes we have things all around us that will serve our purpose well. And we just forget that we have them. And just having a reminder to go and grab that thing and start to implement it is the best thing you could do is to look around and see what you already have that'll help you to meet your goals. So um, this my dad in his own words, I just imagine them taking out 15 minutes in the day, sitting in the corner of the couch and having Brian write down his answers to the questions um, while they laugh and giggle together and get some words out on the page. Then the next one is, isn't this cover? This cover is so cute. It's Conversations with My Dad, a keepsake journal of stories and memories. It's the same kind of vibe. I just wanted to have a different book for each of them. It's such a cute way to get them involved in the conversation and transcribing what came of that conversation. So I would um, imagine that some of this Brian would write and some of this the kids would write and they would just keep moving through those conversations. Questions like, what is your very first memory? What was your first word and the goal is not to force them to complete it in any specific time it's just to get them excited and comfortable with spending that time in conversation and getting these words out onto the pages and this one is fun because it has spaces for pictures so this is the perfect time to call up Nana and pop up or whomever and have them send over a few pictures that you can include inside along with the words. The next one I have is the story of my life. If a story is in you, it has to come out. It's just another journal prompt situation where there's a lot more blank space, but it starts with a question that helps you to boost your memories and just think about your experiences in life, then gives you space to respond to them. So questions like what special traditions did you have in your household growing up? Write about a time when you were given responsibility and go into as much detail as you can. So this one specifically um, is meant for an older adult. So really this could be assigned to anybody if it was a mom, a dad, a grandparent or whomever. I would imagine not having to stick to any one person. But again, just giving them a good prompt that they can start with conversation, to me, is just really cute and exciting. To me, this is like the beginning of critical thinking, where you have to think about your experiences. You have to think about what you're thinking about or how you think about things um, when you're asking these questions to other people. I think kids, blank pages are a daunting task because you're trying to figure out what should I write down, how should I write it down, but starting with conversation, I think, is golden. Um, so having them go and take one page and as assigning a person or suggesting a person and then letting them transcribe the words um, as that person talks is so good. I feel like that's such a good thing. <laughs> and you don't hear people talk about things like this, but to me, this is a really simple way to get them writing. So if they were to go and ask an aunt, what assumptions do people make about you when they first meet you and why are they right or wrong and then have that aunt talk to them and as they talk they are transcribing their words you're in conversation but you're also super engaged because you're trying to write it down and figure it all out and that leads to more questions and to me this is just relational building conversational building critical thinking I just feel like this is gonna be so good and I'm excited to spend the next few years or however long it might take to really develop a love of writing um, for the kids. They already really enjoy writing, mostly creative writing where they're thinking of stories and trying to get their stories out. But this to me is the next step in them learning how to couple that conversation um, with their writing and learning to think about what they're experiencing and getting those words onto paper and communicating that to other people. I feel like anything I try to do and try to teach the kids, I always start with myself. <laughs> so if I'm trying to get them to read more, I'm trying to think of ways or things that I would want to help me to read more. And I always, I think I'm overly hard on myself because I always say that the kids and Brian, they're so great with their reading goals. And meanwhile, I'm such a slow reader and hardly make it through a book. But I'm hard on myself because I have to remember that the books that they're reading through, I'm reading through too. So technically, <laughs> 
I am reading lots and lots of books, just not necessarily the ones that I personally plan to get to for myself, and I'm still working on that. But I said that to say that um, I always just try to think about what I would like um, that would help me to accomplish those goals. And I would like cozy little corners and lots of different um, uh, choices of books to choose from. I'd like fun bookmarks and really cool book lights and just try to think of what I would like to help me to enjoy those things more. I'd like snacks while I'm reading. And so those are things that I try to do with the kids and I've loved doing that over the years. And so when I think about writing, I want to start with us for Mother's Day, Brian, for our anniversary. Anniversary. It's my birthday. Anniversary. Okay. So for our anniversary, this was one of the most precious gifts I had gotten and I haven't used it as much as I want to and this is why we have this little accountability situation with this video. <laughs> but he got us matching journals, uh, 300 more writing prompts, which like I said, it's just a lot easier if you have a little prompt to help you think about what you're thinking about or, you know, your life experiences and um, gives you a space to make room for some of those words. So on what occasion do you reward yourself and what is your reward? What part of your future are you most certain about and what part are you most unsure of? And I think it's really cool for the kids to see you doing because they almost always want to do what they see you doing. So we're currently working on building a nice solid nighttime routine and one of the things that's included in our nighttime routine is our writing. Instead of it being an assignment that I give to them and an expectation that I put on them, I make it an expectation that I suggest to us as a family. And so we all write together. We get out our separate journals, we get out our fun pens or pencils, and we sit and spend time writing together. So this is another example of a journal that you could just throw in the mix. The next one I have, I got this one just recently and Savannah's been really interested or excited to pick this one up. Um, this one is Secrets of Storytelling, a creative writing workbook for kids. I think this is going to start to give her like more structure to her writing because like I said, they're all really big on creative writing on the blank page with a little space for a picture. Um, but I want us to start structuring it better and getting more into it. And so she's really excited about this one. And this one's really cute. It's Secrets of Storytelling, 100 Short Fiction Prompts. Um, and it says for ages 8 through 12, but who cares? If it is something that is a little bit more advanced for my baby, then I jump in and help them more. Um, there's always ways to adapt with resources. And I think that's really important that um, people don't often talk about as much. Because when you start to see it that way, when you start to see resources as adaptable, it helps you to see... Um, or consider the abundance of resources that are around us, if that makes any sense. So I really like this one and I'm excited to see how she works her way through that one. Then I just have three picture books and they're not necessarily my favorite writing picture books. There's tons of writing books and writing picture books and things like that. But I just think you need to open your mind to what's around you, what you have access to and start there. Rufus, the writer, this is one of those books that was writing related. I got it at a good price at an outlet store. A little boy who has a story stand that's open for business and how cute is that? Like to take that and bring it out of the page and create a little story stand for the kids. I think Savannah, I think the kids will really enjoy this in general but that's a cute one. Then making sure to have like a balance between really fun creative writing and story related um, stories to really purposeful writing and story related uh. stories if that makes any kind of sense. So I have Anne Frank's The Girl Heard Around the World. I love this <laughs> this one and um, Malala's Magic Pencil. Um, it just has fun elements but more specifically it leads toward the purpose of writing to see how powerful and how much change that can be brought about um, through the purpose of writing and getting words out on a paper. It's not just always for entertaining and making people laugh, but it's also very much a powerful tool to make people aware of what's happening around the world. And um, I think this one's like one of my favorites, <laughs> one of my favorites to read to the kids so that they're reminded of what, you know, how purposeful writing stories and letters 
and um, things like that really are. And then next up, I just have things to help me like decorate their little spaces. So things like this is super cute and I'll move it around to any space that I need in any part of the room, but just like little writing related things to help them feel legit, help them feel like journalists, like writers, um, to really, I mean, it's my way of incorporating pretend play into our real goals and things that we want to work towards. The super cute typewriter keyboard that Cameron got for Christmas and I also got one from my writing. To me, this just makes writing time really magical, really special, and um, just really encourages us to spend time writing each day. Now that was super long, but that is some of the thoughts and feelings I have surrounding becoming this family of readers, writers, and filmmakers. And for us, our goal is going to start off being a thousand words a week. A thousand words is roughly like two and a half, two and a third <laughs> pages of single spaced writing. And uh, our purpose right now is just to take that writing and pull it together to build a scripts, scripts for our films. And in order to do that, I am going to purpose to reach this goal of a thousand words where I'm taking my writing and coupling it with their writing from different journals, different assignments, or whatever we end up writing throughout the weeks to build these scripts for our films. So I'm very, very, I'm very excited about it. I'm a little nervous about it because I want to stick to the plan. <laughs> but that's the goal. That is our writing goal. That's it, you guys. I want to know how do you feel about writing? Um, what has been your experience with writing? Uh, if it pertains to homeschool, share with us. If it pertains to just personal writing, if it pertains to just reading articles and essays and novels or whatever that have changed your life where you found you know, the purpose of writing has been so much more that has really just come off the page. How do you feel um, about writing in your home, school, and life? Let me know. Let me know, friends. Thanks for listening to me chat about all things writing and our writing goals for this year. Thank you to our friends for sponsoring this video. We love you guys so much. And remember that life is so very full of lessons, and our goal is to live and to learn. Bye. Don't, Don't forget, forget to subscribe! subscribe.